So, hello everybody, I'm Raphael Perry, and I'm going to be playing some Limbo Eternal War with uh, Kelpie. With, with my, with, with, yes, and my name is Alan, and Raphael, yeah. thank, you for, uh, thank you for hosting. That's quite all right. So, um, obviously, this has nothing at all to do with the fact that there may be a new Limbo Kickstarter kicking off in the next week or two that we would all get very excited about. <laughs> <laughs> Be because if it did, I'm sure I'd have like one of the developers along to, to sit and play around and we'd have a, a, a big chat. But for now, uh, Alan hasn't played before. He'd love to play the game and try it out a bit. Um, looking at it with mind to a, a single player rule set, which the developers have suggested they'd be looking at developing a single player rule set at some point in the future. So we. We're just going to play for a few rounds today, have a bit of fun, and, and see if I can remember everything, whereas Alan is, is learning for the first time and seeing how things move and interact with each other and how the various bits of the game work together with each other. Yes. So there are rules related to tr to scenery so like this is a, a big raised rock and people would have to right. climb up it or climb down it or fly across it and we're just not going to use any of the scenery rules today like these these walls for example uh purely because i can't remember them very easily i know it costs extra movement points to cross them but also it's just simpler for this first game to just get down and play and have some fun and then we could introduce scenery rules later on if we needed to. So here we have the forces of light arranged against the forces of darkness in yet another epic final showdown until the next one. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's an eternal war, folks. It's, it's still going on. So we've used the recommended starting forces. We've made a half size fate deck because the fate deck is recommended to be 20 cards but it was just easier to build 10 and we're not going to play a full game anyway uh we have our forces here so let's take a moment to look at our our cards so if you want to look at one of your unit cards yes. and okay, well, press the alt key to look at it and then maybe yeah. um, maybe q and e to rotate it yeah so you can read it easier yeah. looking good here um, so, first off, in the top right hand corner, the number you see there is the amount of points that it would cost you to put this in your army list. So, we're playing roughly a 50, 51 point list each. Uh, mm. So, my leader would be 12 points, yours would be however much they, they cost you. Yeah. Uh, then you have a number of keywords above that. Um, keywords don't do anything on their own but they activate certain abilities so you might have a card that will only do something for human characters or you have to be a human character to use it or a card that will only do something for demons or a card that only your leader can use and so on and so your keywords they're just like these are the things that other things key into yeah uh, you have numbers along the top the heart is how much health this character has mm -hmm. how much damage they can take before they go out of action and get all beaten up and can't be a part of the fight anymore the sword is your attack skill um it's how many dice you roll when you're attacking someone the cloak is your dodging number which mm -hmm. is your defense the mm -hmm. shield is your armor and the boot is your movement speed how fast you go when you move Got it. After that, you'll have a number of um, a number of abilities. Uh, so if I can just see which one you're currently looking at, um, it looks like mm. wrath. Looking at wrath. Yes. Yep. So you have aura of infinite rage, which is uh, the infinity symbol. So that's always on. Uh, there are mm -hmm. four different symbols for these abilities. Okay, you have the the filled in arrow, which means it's an ability. Mm -hmm. The empty arrow, which means it's a reaction. Mm -hmm. the, the spinning circle with the little wisps coming off it mm -hmm. mean that it's a... Um... Let me just quickly look through my old and slightly outdated PDF of the rulebook here. 
Um, where are we? Uh, okay, so the spinning wheel is a reaction. The infinity symbol is a constant ability, so it's always on. Yeah. The yeah. filled in arrow is an active ability, which will mean one of your two actions when you take a turn. And the swift, yeah. which is the empty arrow, is a. Um, it's like an active ability, but it doesn't use an action. And you can only use each swift ability once during your activation. If that makes any sense. So it's like a it's a bonus action that you can do yeah. um, if you feel the need to. I just stole one of your angels right here. So oh, I will um, up there. Yeah, that's okay. That's not part of my force. So you're you're already playing the demons exactly the way you should by messing. <laughs> and I'll just I'll just pop it back on the deck here and All right. drop it back in place. There we go. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I suppose those demons they just they just want to get their filthy claws back on the the beauty of heaven once again. They're missing it, you know. They've, they've absolutely. Fallen We've been exactly. We want to get back. <laughs> yeah. Fa thank goodness we're not playing the original version of Hell Dorado with the the full page illustration that got removed from when they translated the rule book from French to English, they removed a wow. full page illustration of an angel being gang raped by demons. Okay. It was That's... probably a good idea to remove that illustration, to be honest. Probably. It it caused a bit of a, a bit of a stink when foreigners got hold of the French rule book. Because it, it was like mm -hmm. four or five years before it even got translated into English. Mm. Um, and people were like, okay, so we need to have a French to English dictionary to understand how to play this. And then we get this picture. <laughs> yeah. So uh, to start our first round, we have some fake crystals here on the fake board, right? Mm -hmm. And looking at the fake board, this is my side. This is your side. This is the space for crystals I'm giving to you. And this is the space for crystals you're giving to me. Because as yeah. you use a crystal it goes to the other person. Yeah. So to start the game, we would secretly bid an amount of points. Uh, I'm going to mm -hmm. just put two in here. Yeah. And this is bidding for, where's it go? You didn't, where did it go? Did I, did I lose it? <laughs> okay, I'll just make another one. There we go. I don't know where that one went. It disappeared. So I've secretly bid two, and then you'd secretly bid up to your full total of three. And this is bidding okay. for going first, right? For ah. who's going to the initiative in the first round. And, you know, there, there may be advantages to going first. There may be advantages to going second. I'll just, just for the sake of, you know, getting... I'll just I'm bidding one. I am because I am. I'd like to be able to react to whatever you're doing because I'm okay. new to the game. So, so so then we would reveal our secret bids and we would see that I've bid more than you. So yeah. you get this one back, but you also get both of these. Mm. And then I get this one because I. Oh no! Actually, you get this one because it's the first round. So normally, before this bid, the, the seventh crystal would go to whoever had scored the least victory points total in the game so far. Mm. And then we, that would give you an advantage in the bidding process. Um, so you get lots of fake crystals to spend, and I just get one. Excellent. So then we go I... to the big board here. Oh, uh, our fake cards have a number in the top right-hand corner. The number in the top right hand corner is the amount of fake crystals you would need to spend to play that card. Just have a look. Yep. The the card will have a name. It will have uh, yeah. some writing in red that tells you who can use it. Yeah. And then there'll be a description below showing some kind of action, be it a reaction, yeah. an action, a swift, or whatever it is. 
and you would need to pay that many points and to spend those points you would just put them over here in on my side of the line but in no man's land and then at the end of your activation those points would all go to me and how high do these numbers go up to let's just i mean i have I, the, the one that's immediately revealed is a one they i and, don't think um, they go above about a three or four okay great and they're generally ones and twos yes you probably want to put that one back where i can't see it because it's currently visible there we go all right um so you get to go first so you would pick a a character or a unit I did, and they would didn't go. you win didn't you win the initiative oh yes sorry i did didn't i yes <laughs> foolish me it would be so, like an, an extra extra advantage for me to have both mm. a lot of crystals and okay oh yes so so um the other thing i didn't quite cover is special actiony things uh, we have we have many tokens that we should probably use at some point um, of 22 tokens and some dice let's let's get some dice out um, and just they're, they're all pretty much the same I think mm. um, I'll just get some out as well I'm going with five dice aside because of talking about Hell Dorado earlier because in that game you're not allowed to roll more than five dice at once right and it just stuck in my mind there uh, some tokens there's lots of different tokens this game uses but for now we're just going to want lots of this one um, so I'll, I'll clone a few of these and yeah. we'll make some more as we need to. This is the token that says you've finished your activation and this guy can't go again until the next round. Got it. So, so yes. I'm going to activate the Rose Knights and all three of them will get to go, but they act one after another. They don't all have to act. They don't all move together and do the same thing together when when a unit activates it takes two actions mm -hmm. so my little rose knights have a move of four so i'm going to start with some moving and i'm going to go one two three four to there and there's no extra cost of um there's no additional cost to moving diagonally even though diagonally you cover more distance from moving straight and i'll move her one two three more spaces and i'll stop there because i don't want her to get left on her own and yeah she's the same on both sides and we'll just give her an activated token there to show she's done and then i'll move this one one two three four five six seven to there and we'll give her a activated token as well and then the last one I'm going to go one two three four five six seven eight to there and I'll clone another activated token and they are now finished they're done that's their entire activation and now a play passes over to you to choose something to do so there's a number of different actions you can do you can mm -hmm. do you can do actions twice you can do actions once and I'll I'll just go find them again and look through them quickly so there's attacking which generally you want to be up close to someone to do that unless you've got a ranged weapon yeah move which is to move which is move mm -hmm. your your movement distance um, if you move out of combat the person you're fighting will get to make an attack on you as you leave it's called an attack of opportunity sure yes there is a special move you can do called a sidestep where you just move one square and one square only away from your enemies mm -hmm. and that that provokes no attacks of opportunity so that's a safe move but it does cost a whole one of your two actions yeah. right uh skills any skill on the card interact mm -hmm. if we had some objectives like a sacred holy altar or something on the table and you were coming over to defile that as demons or if i was going to purify it 
then it would cost one of your two actions to interact with it and do the scenario objective thing that you do with that thing. Mm -hmm. And then active ability action, that would be, again, using a... So the abilities on the cards are the abilities. The skills are written down the bottom. For instance, Veronique has huge immune pierce 2, which I believe means ignores two points of armor reach so her weapon reaches a bit further and daze um and elia here has pierce one and wound um so those mm. some of these skills need to be activated so i think like the accuracy one on the rose knights is something they'd need to activate mm -hmm. some skills you need to activate some you don't mm -hmm. um and the important thing for you to remember at this point is that lords on their turn they get three actions instead of two. But I think okay. the third action might need to... I think one of those might need to be a bonus action instead of a normal action. Right. So who would you like to go with first? You have well, a lot of, a I'm lot of gonna, choices. Yeah, I'm going to... Can can the characters kind of pass through each other or jump over each other? Uh -huh. um, um, some have a flying ability. Uh, mm. So... Roth here with his big wings has um, deadly flight. Flight allows him to pass over lesser creatures because he just flies over them. Um, there's there's some large creatures who don't have the power of flight, who have the ability to just stride over smaller creatures. Um, otherwise, I believe believe they do block a bit. And oh, that can be useful to to move to to block people in and hinder their movement. So I'm well, going to well, take well, the... wait, 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 wait. Um, <laughs> there's more. All right. Uh, models that you control don't block your movement because they get out of the way and let you go past. Models the enemy controls block your movement and stop you going across because they are like, hey, I'm in the way. I'm, I'm you know, I'm deal yes. with me. But then if you're flying over like a big dragon yes. or demon or something, you can just go. Yeah, I'm just flying over you. Got it. <laughs> so, so let's say I knew that one of your. Um, one of your units were maybe struggling to survive. I could fly over with my demon and maybe eliminate that one from the board. Absolutely, like yes. Fly over your other units and to eliminate that. That, Just that something... is completely correct. Yeah. All right. Got it. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, you know, it is. It's just making me think of the possibilities. You know. Um, oh yes, absolutely. This is, this is this is great. Well, okay. So I need to zoom in a little bit here so I can see what I'm doing. So help me out here. I'm I'm thinking about I'm thinking about taking these two, these front row units ah. here. Yeah, like the guards. So the, you have two separate the guys, units here. You these, have the messiahist yeah. and the oscillate guard. You would yeah. only only activate one and not the other of these units. You wouldn't activate the row. So you'd either the Oslite okay. guards are skeletons with yeah. swords and shields and some armor. The Messergeists are wraithy ghost creatures with scythes. Yeah, they these guys will be going forward. The the the, the geists there. They okay. Will, well, let, let's activate them then. So, so they have a, a movement speed of four. Have um, they have a disorienting blast active ability. Ah. The disorienting blast is a ranged attack. The number in brackets after the attack listed is the range. So that is yeah. three dice at range four. Okay, um, got it. Oh, wow. So he could, yeah, they could conceivably maybe reach your units and attack them this, this oh, turn. Oh, let's see. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not quite, but you'd get very close. Okay, so... Um, all right. Um, so the the geist at the back here can move through friendly figures as long as he arrives on an empty square. Yeah. So these two can go wherever they want, really. Yes. Okay. Let me see here. 
and we're, we're not playing a scenario we're not playing for objectives we're, we're playing as a learning experience here so there, there's there's no that you know a good mistake is one that you learn from definitely so so how far does he move do they move they have four is that that the speed yeah yes so if you want so this... twice that would be eight so they don't all need to do the same thing so pick no. one of the three that you want to go with first okay. i'm going to go with this, this one this guy here yeah. i want this just so i could do one could i do well one yep. two, two i can move three. him I could move him up here. Yeah, that's only three points, so you could move him a fourth square if you wanted as well. Yeah, oh, I see. Okay. No, sorry, I, I miscounted. Oh, right there, yeah. A camera Great. angle, I was looking at it a bit differently. So that's his first action. Don't do anything else. Oh, all right. He so we a second finished. action before anyone else ah, gets a okay. go. <laughs> Got it. So it's we fine. will be one, two. Um, hang on here's one two three i will be moving him up here yeah. all right okay yeah so this now that he's end. finished we'll give him an activated token to show that he's done yes it. and we'll we'll move on to the next geist because you have three in the unit yeah so i will do one two one two three I'll move that guy up here. Yeah. So the the and... range attack of the geists it doesn't do damage, but it it dazes and stuns enemies and makes them less effective. All right. And I'm I'm needing um, to look at break and... now because that's where are we? So that was his first four moves um can he use this rain this um kind of race terrain stuff as cover you know um, um well we're we're not using the rules for scenery today but yes he would be able to go no, right, right. so it. i'll just okay no sure i would yeah yeah so so normally absolutely yes if you were like hiding behind it over here right. i couldn't shoot you from anywhere over here All right, so we'll we'll give him a token as well. Finish up there, and I'm going to grab you got the third one. Yes, do that, and do I have one more move? Uh, and so no, I he can hasn't move done three units. Yet, so he's got that two. Three units every every time you activate that that unit, all three of the guys will get to go. Two, so he's gone one, two, three, four. Yep, and then for his second action, here we go. So I'm kind of thinking, okay, let's just, you know, we'll just, because I want to get into the, I want to get into mm. the action. One, two, three, and no, okay. yeah, no, he'll just end right there. Seems seems fine. That's okay. all right. We'll give him so, a token as well. So we haven't spent any fake crystals yes. yet. Um. It's possible no. that some of the abilities, ah, yes, abilities on a, on the character cards, if they have a number in square brackets after the ability name, that is the fake cost of performing that ability. Mm -hmm. So I do not have a lot available to me right now. Uh, I'll go with Godfrey because I haven't used him Ooh. in ages. Um, so he has follow my example as a um, always on constant ability. So I should read that and just remind myself what it does. Um, okay. So if if any if any of my other guys attack someone that is fighting him, they get a bonus. All okay. right. So he will move four spaces. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four to here. Oh, and then I'm going to go one, 
to I'm just going to go to here and stop there and not go too close. Yeah. I'll pop that on there and he's done. Back over to you, my friend. All right. So I can see we're going to have some we're going to uh, come into contact very soon. Oh, so pretty quickly. Yes. I'm going to send <laughs> I'm going to. Yeah, I'm gonna send. What's his name? Mokrum, Mokrum. It, I'm, I, I'm not sure. It's, it's Mokrum or Mukrum or Malkrum. What, whatever yes. you think sounds most like a big giant skeleton monster who controls loads of skeletons. <laughs> so that's his first move. Mhm. Mm and he's gonna move right up right up behind here wonderful look he's looking and very large and imposing i think so this should be i have no idea if, if, if this is probably tactically you know but this is oh, I can just, this is um i'm barely like... paying attention to the ability of my guys because... i'm just moving them around making it look exciting you know uh i'll, it, I'll go there it, next it's really it sounds like you get into the action quite quickly, actually, because um, this would be even fat, even faster on a. Well, I guess it depends, of course, because you, you could arrange formations and stuff. I mean, I'm sure we're not doing things optimally. So, for instance, looking at this, um, I I can see that Veronique is all the way over here, and all your guys are over on this side of the table. So, rather than advancing, I'd probably be moving over this way. Um, yes. And also sometimes you can keep people in reserve to be like a second line of, and be like, you don't want to throw everyone in straight away. Uh, I know that Elia is all about supporting and leading the Rose Knights and that thematically she's like their captain or leader. So yeah. I should totally keep her near them. Um, yes. If she's threatened by... Oh, I see. That's useful to know. Um, so she has a special ability where she does really well if she's fighting only one person at a time. So we go one, two, three, four, five. Also, um, this hasn't been filled in for everyone yet, but for some of the characters, when you mouse over them, they have, um, and then hold it for long enough, they have their, their stats pop up if you just keep the mouse still for a second or two. So while she has five more, I'm only going to move her to here, and she will be done. Excellent. So I have a couple of actions now. Yes. Uh, so you could go with the Ocelite Guard yes. or Roth or Lilith, who are all very interesting choices to make. You know, I, you know what? I'm gonna bring Lilith up the middle here. So Ooh, okay. right this will now, be interesting. yeah. Right now, it looks like I've got two of my big demon folk, demon people. Mm. Um, um, one, two, three, four, and she could just go one. Uh -huh. Two, three, four. She could go up here, yeah. Like Wonderful. right there. Is she there we go. having problems balancing it? Oh no, she's fine. Okay, we'll give her a token then if she's done. I mean, this first yes. round we've we've been mostly double moving. We haven't been using very many yeah, special yeah. abilities. So we've been very um you know, rather simple and lazy. We're very well, it is, you know, it's our first, you know, we're baby steps here. Hmm. Um, I'm going to try a ranged attack, I think, because that will be an extremely suboptimal choice at this point. <laughs> maybe I won't. Maybe, maybe I absolutely won't, because I literally can't. Mm. Um, right, I'll, I'll explain that in a moment. So I'll do the Tiger Knight Archers now. And I'll start with this one. 
no, he doesn't have his stats in his description, so I'd have to manually enter those at some point later. Um, so he's got a move of four. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And then if I wanted to shoot this over here, I probably couldn't. So he has a ranged attack with uh, attack of two in close combat, three ranged with four square range. Um, mm. For every for every square beyond that four square range, I would get minus one attack. So he literally can't shoot more than about seven spaces. So in that regard, I'm going to move him to here to play a more supporting role. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Um, one, two, because I obviously want to see the enemies. So I'm moving up to here with this archer. Very close to the action, probably very dangerous, and I may very well regret that. And then I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to here. And my archers have all rushed forwards very aggressively. And there we go. All right. So I would like to, I would like to, because I see that Lilith has a, she has a special ability. Ah, yes, and she does. She has the dominate ability. And now, uh, dominate is an active ability, so it would have been one of her two actions on her turn. Okay. Because the arrow so, is filled in, it would cost right, you three okay. fate crystals, crystals, and then you could do it. Yes. Um, um, it's a great ability, and I would love to see her using that in the next round. Normally, I would allow you to do this because it's your first time playing, but the fact that she'd be staying like four or five spaces further away means I don't yeah. think she'd have anyone in range. Okay, that's... Because I'd, I'd tell you my cunning plan here would be to get one of... Possibly one of your archers, possibly that archer, C1 oh, yes. or, or the Rose Knight, to hurt Godfrey, which would mean that uh, Malcolm could use his, his special ability, which oh, is to... Oh, oh, oh. Is to attack a bloodied character, so that could ah, be. Yes. Um, um, so, so that would kind of be. So that would bloodied, be the idea, just right. Bloodied means they are half health or less. It means they ah, got quite okay. a lot of blood on them. They are seriously wounded. All right, all right, okay. That's so that's something a... I should have probably explained earlier, but I was going to leave and it that's... until someone actually took damage. <laughs> that's but that's that's uh, but that's a strategy that could come into play later on. You yeah, know? absolutely. Um, 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 yeah. So let's see. So uh, you're you're currently restricted to characters who haven't activated yet. And which one were those? This uh, uh, the, the blue uh, token means they've already gone, and they, yeah. they can't go again. At the okay, end of so the round, when we start those... the new round, we take all the blue tokens away. Ah, okay, so we haven't even moved around. Okay, so basically mm. I have these characters down here in the back. That and I need the to get great into. big demon sitting on a rock surrounded yeah. by a pool of lava and all kinds of hellish stuff, um, yes. So he's deaf. Uh, I'm sorry, play you things. suffered a bit of an audio issue there. I didn't quite hear Yeah, that. I had a bit of a... Uh, there's no need to to um, to kind of just. I'm not I'm not playing carefully. To oh, that's all right. Neither am I. Four and one, two. Hang on. He's, oh, hang. I'm just. Where was it? I'm gonna redo this. We'll just say he was. He was. We'll say he was there. He was, it's where he was. So um, that's fine. <laughs> Two, three, four, one. We'll just move him up, like here. So he is uh, going to be. You you you're not allowed to stand on top of someone when you finish. 
<laughs> oh no is he oh he is yeah. can he be you you had one of your would... messer geists underneath him there i could yes would be all right there is that am i moving too there we much? are that's fine that's that's him done all right um so that he is yeah. uh speed of four no that's correct uh he's a lead he's your he's your lord though so he gets a third action oh so range to i'm going to just quickly check that it's allowed to be a normal action it doesn't have to be a bonus action or something um but i i remember lords get free actions let's say lords are allowed free actions for now and and if it's that, that one of them has to be a bonus action then it's my bad and i'll look it up in between games and we'll find out next time or um, or i'll find out next time and go like oops my mistake so could he what are the range of your archers? Because I'd be interested in that. What is the range of them? Ah, yes, but the third action has to be a, a bonus um, has to be a bonus skill action. So So, there, so it would be so one there, of his okay, skills. Yes, so that's um, fine. We're just gonna leave, leave him there for now. Oh, where's his where's his card gone? I can't see it here anymore. Oh it's dropped underneath. There we go. Um, so he could use, say, you know, inspire frenzy or or relish for slaughter. Well, relish for slaughter is a reaction, so you do reactions on someone else's turn. Yes. Um, or on your own turn. They, they, they reactions yeah. when the thing triggers. Uh, so yes, yeah, inspire frenzy would cost you two fate crystals, and you'd you would deal two damage to that character to a friendly character within two spaces so what, is, what does give boost them all mean yes ah so you can you can have a boost on any ability score right um let me try and find boost it either makes it higher or gives it some kind of bonus to where are we here boom boost um yeah so it so boost literally makes a stat one higher so it would improve um you know attack dodge armor movement and in this case it would boost everything so you deal two damage to them but you'd make all of their stats one point higher and uh, mm. those would, but I wouldn't do that now because all those tokens go away at the end of the round. So yeah, you okay. wouldn't really so benefit. So it makes from no it. sense. No. Okay. We'll leave him for now. I think next round it could be conceivably come into play. That is a good ability to use if you have the uh, Berserkers of Blood demonic unit because they if they if they are at half health they get advantage when attacking which just means they rip things apart <laughs> so I'll, All right. I'll go with veronique now oh wait we um yeah he's got his token that's fine yeah i'll, I'll go with veronique she's my last so veronique is not the big armored form she's the little woman at the bottom magically controlled yes um i will use my bonus skill action to use unlimited power to perform Ooh. the channel ability um not everyone has the option to do the channel ability and i will get a channel token for that um okay it represents the character channeling the fabric of reality and attempting to bend their fate. When a character uses the channel skill, place a fate crystal onto that character. When playing fate costing, okay. So literally what happens is she gets one of these fate crystals and 
when she's using special abilities, she can use that fake crystal to help pay the cost. So I could use this one here and my one here to do a two cost ability. Mm. Cheeky. I'm going to move her now. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. No, where was I? Uh, one, two, three, four to here. Um, so now I have the option of using my um, telekinetic shield reaction to protect anyone near her. So literally the big giant suit of armor with the shield just kind of reaches out, puts the shield in front of someone and protects them. <laughs> mm. So I'm going to move her again and go one, two... This is, this is a very good place for her to be for now. Protecting yes. people. And she is now done. So now you get to activate the Oscillite Guard because they're the only ones you have who haven't gone yet. So they are going to rush forward here. Um, one, hang on, I just need to check where their movement. That's all right. They would be, yes, you found them. Four, that's fine. So uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. He's going to be on line with this. Now, here, he has a reaction that occurs at the end of his activation. OK. Ah, uh, it's guard. Mm -hmm. And I'm just looking for the guard token to um, to give you one. Thank you. Um, so guard is the eye token. Okay, wonderful. There we go. So he gets a guard token and he gets a activated token. And it's it's insisting on putting it on top, but we know they're both there, okay? So what the guard token means is Yes. If if I am attacking, um, if I'm attacking one of your characters, not the character with the guard token, but if I'm attacking one of your characters and any of your characters with the guard token are standing next to me, mm -hmm. every every guard token you've got standing next to me gives me a disadvantage in the attack because you're okay. protecting the person I'm trying to hurt. Yes. You you know you're like dragging, distracting. You know, counter-attacking from different directions and making it harder for me to focus and concentrate. So you you have four more oscillate guards to go with. So they they help protect. All right, I'll just move. Yes. So I will just one, two, three, four, two, three. That seems like a good spot mm -hmm. right there. And we'll we'll give him um, his two tokens. Yeah. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's a good place for this guy here. If he has a little trouble fitting in, no, there we go. That's fine. One, two, three, four. One. He can just move up there. They they do when when you drop them, they do try to snap to the grid. Uh, sometimes yeah. I have a little difficulty, and it's fine. One, two, three, four. So here we go. Okay, wonderful. And I'll just put those there. All right, so now that we've all activated, we get to the end of the round. We would check mm. to see if we've got any victory points, if we've scored the winning condition for the scenario. And neither of us have done that, so we're going to take all of the activation yeah. tokens away so that everyone's Perfect. ready to go again on the next round. Is that right? Yeah. Now, Oops. yes, it, it is very easy to do that by mistake. It's fine. Got it. So for now, we're just being very messy and dropping them all down all over the place. 
and we'll put these guard tokens back because they as far as i'm aware do not go away at the end of a round hmm. uh they go away at the beginning of your the next time you activate the unit so they are now guarding until they go again so now we would they... progress to round two we reset yes. the fake crystals so we have three so I don't get to and one them. goes into the middle again. I'll double check on that though, because it feels like you might have a massive fake crystal advantage here. So yeah, we, we do reset the fake crystals again. Yeah. But I believe there's an advantage to holding more of them at the end of the round. I just can't remember what it is right now. Uh, reset fake. We would each draw one card from our deck because we haven't used any cards yet. So I'm going to draw a card. You can right click on the deck and, and press draw, or you can pick up a card and drag it over to your hand space. And I haven't really been able to to utilize my cards because I just didn't have any fake crystals last round. Right. So you get yourself a fifth card here. Um, I can't see where the rest of your deck has gone, so it might be hiding in your Ooh. secret space here. Oh, this I is have it. Is this it? These nine cards right here? There. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, right-click on that and click draw. Right so you should now have five cards up here. Or you can just there do it that go. way, yeah. There you go, you have a fifth card now. Ooh. So now we're going to not so secretly bid for initiative on the next round. Uh, because um, we have these, these colored boxes which can be used to hide parts of this, like a blindfold that only one of us can see. I'm, I'm only going to bid one. So I will just... I'll just for the what happens if we have you know an equal amount of crystals that's a very good question let's check um, the the player who didn't have initiative so the person who didn't have it last time gets it so it just passes over on a draw interestingly enough in the box we have more fate tokens so the idea is that i found the one that went and dropped underneath there so <laughs> we would, right. so what you do sneakily is you keep your visible ones here your free here visible take up to free up the box and like hide them there and do your secret deployment so that it looks like you haven't spent any, so your opponent doesn't know how many you've spent, so that's how you hide those. And that's sneaky. <laughs> so then the initiative would pass to me, and I would also get both of these. But... Ah, oh, that's a lot, isn't it? Well, I'm going to have to spend a lot of these so that you get some. Basically. Yes. And we can have some fun with those. Um, hmm. Well, I know that Lilith can do some very nasty, complicated things, and Mulkrum is also very nasty, so I think I'd like to activate Godfrey and go in and fight them. But also, oh, yes. I have my, my archers who haven't done any shooting yet, and they really should. Um... So I'm going to activate my archers, and I'll move this one up to here, mm -hmm. and then he'll shoot an arrow. And I think he'll shoot an arrow at um, this this ghastly geist mm -hmm. over here. Geist here, all right. So when shooting, my archer has an attack of three. So I would get one, two, three dice. Um uh, P 
pierce one will ignore one point of armor, but I don't think you have much armor as a ghost anyway. Uh, when attacking, you're not blooded, so that's fine. Uh, friendly. Oh, friendly characters don't obstruct his... Oh, in that case, he can just stay back here and shoot then. Um, you're, you are still in range, so I'll do that. Um, now, at this point, we would check to see if I had any advantages that I could benefit from in the attack, or if you had any disadvantages you could impose. Um, mm. I don't have any, unfortunately, and I wish that I did. Um, I have... I have the guard, possibly? Uh, the, for the guard, you would need to be standing next to my archer. Oh, to your To make archer. it harder for okay. him to shoot you. Right. Okay. Um, so it's not something that extends so it, to my... It's not something the, that extends the... that way. No. no. All right. Uh, I'm just going to shoot... So I'll roll my free dice here. Go for it. And okay. we'll see what I can get. I have two fives and a one. Ooh, that that's quite nasty. So, fives in this game can explode. It's, it's a common term used in gaming where it's like the dice explodes, you roll it again, add it, add it on top. So, this okay. gives me 11. I'm going to mm -hmm. add an extra one for that five and add an extra one for this mm -hmm. five and roll these. Any mm -hmm. fives I roll here won't give me extra dice. And if okay. I had some kind of so, special critical ability, I would use those as well. So this is a blank. This does nothing. Yeah. So this gives me a total of 13. Ouch. So we look up the dodge and armor of your, your Messergeist. He is dodge free and armor one and armor none. Armor none. So yeah. So we divide the 13 by three and we get mm -hmm. four. Right? He's, he's going to die. And so he will take four points of damage. And he has four wounds. Oh, he does perish. Yes. He died. That's a, nice, that's a nice shot there. That was a very lucky shot. So he is... At, when all health is done, he's removed from the board. Oh, no! And, <laughs> and I, would, I would gain victory points... Uh, Yes. If you look at the, the Messergeist card here, you see three, three costs at the top, three, six, and eight. Uh, so this shows you that this is a unit of three people. It costs you three points to have one on the battlefield, another three points taking you up to six to have two on the battlefield, and the third one only costs you two more points to increase up to eight. Mm. So I've scored three victory points out of the potential yes. eight card. Okay. And... Because my knight doesn't, my archer doesn't want to die. I'm going to have him run away a little bit now, yes. so that he's a bit harder for you to target. But it gets a little bit worse, I'm afraid, because my oh, other two archers good. are on the same activation because it's a unit. So I'm mm. not playing really well here. I'm going to go one, two, three, four to here, and then one, two, three. I'm running around here to try and get to shoot at the things at the back, which means that he's basically dead if you want to kill him. <laughs> I, I, I would like I would like that very much, you know. Um, and uh, feel... this one will go up to here and shoot at your oscillate guard over here. Yes. Now, under the terrain rules, he might like get a slight advantage because this is obviously a raised area, but we're not using yeah. those today. So no, no, no. just totally just free dice and we'll see. Hopefully I won't get as many fives again. Uh, oh. Ten. Three, six, ten. Your Ocelite guard has free dodge and one armor, so that's four. So it's literally only two damage. He has free health, so he's still, so, he's still alive. Uh, I'm going to one, and we'll copy that, so he can have two. There's a, there's a one point wound token. There's a, a two and a there's a three and a five. You know, so so he's got yeah. two damage and his um his guarding token, and that means my archers have all gone, and it's over to you to choose an activation. Okay, so who do I have fairly close by? Is it possible to attack twice in a turn? 
if you With can reach character? if you can reach it's possible to attack twice in a turn yes so the massacre i just need to have a look to see who would be the better ones to um kind of attack. so the, the guys, guys can can daze a target or break any so you choose one stat and say i'm breaking that stat uh, let me go check what breaking does because it, it's literally the opposite of a boost you know so um uh break i will yeah so a break just lowers the stat by one um and okay days um okay so days takes away a focus token Focus is a token you can get which gives you a bonus on doing things. We don't have any focus tokens yet, so mm -hmm. dazing isn't going to help particularly. However, um, when a person with, who, with the daze condition is attacking, they get disadvantage on the attack, and when someone attacks them, they get advantage to attack the dazed person. So it is quite powerful still, even though there's no mm. focus tokens to get rid of. So what I would try and do in this round is that I have these two I have these two guards. Yes. And I'd like to try and take out both of your archers. You have one All down, right. so the down first here and one up there. Then, so is take away your guard tokens from all your oscillate guards because yes. they're now activating and then we'll give him back his damage tokens yes uh which skeleton would you like to go with first so let's try and deal with this one up i forget if, if he has range does he um he's well he's currently sitting on top well, of his friend we'll well, we'll fix that <laughs> it's there okay we go. um so yeah you, you move on up there you could make that a move action or a charge action at that distance a charge isn't really going to help much a charge just lets you go a little bit further and okay. move over obstacles on your way to the target so he's moved in and now he wants to attack he does so he's got three attack die yes so three dice to attack uh he has Perfect. two attack dice for the oscillate okay, card two. um yes Oh, I I get disadvantage to shoot him. I should have taken that into account when I shoot him See, yeah, because he's pick... he's got no soft squishy bits in between the bones for arrows and crossbow bolts to really do damage to. So it'll hit the bones or just go right through him. So how so do I pick up two dice? To pick up dice, you can you can left click and drag to select, and then. Yeah you can you can shake them about a bit and let go to roll them or you can mouse over them and press the f key repeatedly to, first you want to let go of the one you're holding yep uh so then you could drag to select two and then you could press the f key repeatedly to roll them or you could just toss them about a little bit so this one this one is, is a one gonna, i one. won't let that count because you just um four so i'll re-roll this yeah, guy here. four nine right. now that five if you had some kind of critical effect you could do that yeah um you have accuracy one which is important i should look at that and see what that gives you because it might accuracy oh i see i see right yes so accuracy doesn't give you any extra dice, but you add it to the total of your attack when you've rolled all your dice. Uh, it would be ten. Five, yeah. five does give you another die to roll if you like. Okay, I would. So, so that's up to nine. Or nothing. Blank. So that is a total of ten. Yes. Now, my archer here has a defense of three, and no armor. So he's got a little bit of armor, but it's not enough to really protect him very much. Yeah. So we would divide the ten by three. We would get free yep. and that is the amount mm -hmm. of damage he will take okay. he has four wounds so he is very nearly dead um okay. i will i will copy one of these and give him one um two and copy one more and we'll drop all those on here and say ow he's very badly hurt he is now by the way definitely bloodied because he's past the halfway mark in his in his health 
<laughs> so if you have any advantages but do extra things to blooded people this would be yes a oh yes this skirton has now finished his activation so he gets his guard token yeah, back and an activation token as well there we go mm, so four more skeletons to go it seems like i so it seems like i have a choice now i could choose to conceivably kill that archer completely mm. with this guard or i could um I could do, you know, run down and try and hurt this guy. I don't believe that I'll roll as well as I just did. Um, <laughs> That's so, okay. So, <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna play it a little bit safe, and I'm gonna try and run up with this one to. Mm. Wonderful. Two, three. I'm gonna try and take him out completely um, Oops, you might want to be standing next to him too there we go yeah, <laughs> yeah. so now Great. the situation has changed because you have a uh, you have two enemies next to my one man which may very well give you advantage and he's potentially bloodied as well uh he is bloodied so that's going to really hurt him as well yes So what are the common sources of advantage? Um, I think you should get a gang up advantage here, but I advantage and disadvantage. Da, 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 da. Um, right. So in order to gain advantage, you need to be on opposite sides of the target uh, to gain a flanking advantage. Right. Okay. However, you might have something special because he's bloodied as well. Let's, uh, let's see. Uh, no, you don't. But I should remember that disadvantage because we'll see how that works soon. So you get your two dice to roll. And let's hope you can yeah. do enough damage to kill him off. You literally just need to get higher than three here. Yeah. So let's see if I can. So you can you can drag and select the dice, or you can yeah, you just select that. Okay, here you go. Here I'm going to say. Oh, that's barely, barely. So we would divide the five by his free defense, and we would get one and a bit. That would be one more wound. That would be enough to finish him off, and he will perish. We'll take him off over here. All right. And yes, I I know uh, for the viewers here, I have a card in my hand that I could play. Um, but it wouldn't really help very much. I have, I have a card mm. in my hand called Never Say Die, which is for humans, where I would pay two fake crystals as a reaction, and he wouldn't die. He'd stay on the table, but then he'd die at the end of the round. And that would be really good to use if he didn't already have a blue activation token. Because then mm. I could still get to take his turn as he's you know, you know, on his last dying breath, just gasping as he sees the, you know, the black smoke and clouds overhead and the fiendish forces descending upon him. He takes that one last heroic action. But because he's already mm. taken his action, that would be a waste and it wouldn't do anything. So um, there we, we go. So you, you get your guard token for finishing and your yep. move token yep. uh, for finishing your turn as well. All right. Um, you have three more Oscillite guards remaining. And I'll okay. Move these so, out of the way to give you a little space. We got the, so he's gonna. We're gonna get this guy up here mm. and attack. Godfrey. We're gonna try and we're gonna try and attack Godfrey. This is um. This is a brave move. <laughs> it is. And it will just. We'll just see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So so two um, dice again. Uh, remember, if if you can if you can uh, left click and drag with a mouse, you can select multiple dice at once instead of having to select them both. Together. I am I, I am kind of dragging it on top. Is that how I do it? Uh, no, no. So put the die down. Just yep. left click on some empty space near the dice and drag as yep. if you're you know, ah, selecting some space. Roger. And then both the dice and will then... go around as you do stuff with them. 
Got it. Oh, a five and a one. So that five gives you another die you can roll. Uh, roll a five here. Yep. We'll just do this. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I figured it out. Uh, so and five, six, seven. Um, Godfrey has a defense of three and an armor of two for a total of five. So dividing that by, you know, fives and seven goes yes. once. So he's going to get one point of damage. Mm. And he has nine health. So he can take quite a bit before he stops fighting. Got it. Now so, your skeleton yes. has finished, so he gets a guard token and an activation token. Yes. So, one, two, three, four, and... Five leg whoops. So he's just kind of ah. taking two move actions to rush on up. There Is you he? go. If you, some, if you one, watch the, two, the shadow three, on the board, four. that shows where they go yes. to land and they drop. So he has okay. moved twice, but he still comes up with a guard token and makes things harder. And then one, two, three, four. So he will just... What is the range of Godfrey? Uh, Godfrey, that's a very good question. He has reach because he's mm. using a long lance and he's very big with very big arms. Yes. Uh, reach means he can reach an extra space uh, so mm. reach should have a numerical value if none is listed it's just reach one uh, sometimes you might see reach two uh, i don't think we've got anything reach two at the moment so he literally can reach two squares instead of one when he's attacking okay got it so one two, but actually in that case why don't you come up here and stand right behind your other two us like guards and I can show you something. So Very cool. If I, if God, I with Godfrey were to attack this oscillate guard, mm. you would have one guard token, two guard tokens, and I would get two disadvantages on the attack. I'm not going ah. to say you have to stand there now. You you can go stand somewhere else if you want, but it's just the way the guard tokens work that make it harder for me to hurt you. Well. Just for the so my yeah because conceivably this guard the one B could come up next turn absolutely you know, yes and so yeah we'll he could, leave he, he could even come up this turn he was like back here wasn't he I think so he could come yeah one, but two, he three, wouldn't be four, would he be able to five. attack he wouldn't be able to actually a charge has to be a straight line otherwise he could get here and attack but he could walk all the way back around here or he could come out over here somewhere. Because uh, he's he could still move again a second time as he's got a second action. Okay, so one, two, three, four. So you know what? We'll move him down. Ah, defending we'll Lilith. Right Very there. wise. Yes. So now if I have to attack her and I'm standing next to him, I get disadvantage. And you know what? I think I should activate Godfrey next and do exactly that so we can explore advantage and disadvantage together. Absolutely. Uh, so I'll go Godfrey. He's going to go one, two, three, four oh to goodness. here. And we will find a way to get him to land in the space. He's being a little awkward right now. It's fine. He's there. And he would like to attack Lilith. This might not go very well. We'll see. Um, so he has an attack of four, which isn't great. He does have accuracy two and deadly two. Um, accuracy is the one that adds to the, the damage total, right? Mm hmm Oh, yes. And deadly is a multiplier, which I'll, I'll explain oh, no. in a bit. So he is rolling um, four dice. So I take this one away and I'll have four dice here and I will roll these. But before I do, you have two Oslite guards with guard tokens next to me. So that gives Ooh. me a disadvantage of two. And do they get an attack of opportunity? Um, yes, they probably should have done, actually. So each of them will get one attack of opportunities he's leaving. So why don't you do that? 
uh, with your two dice, on, and we'll see if we Doom. can do any more damage to him. Uh, oh, no, yes. Was so that's nine, uh, and nine then rolling two, a third die. Uh, 10, 11, plus your accuracy one is 12, and his armor and dodge defense are a total of five, so that is two more points of damage to him. And then okay. the second one gets his attack as well. All right, we'll see. Uh, uh, so that's four, seven. seven. Um, that's... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these tokens off. Uh, so obviously that would be... Um, um, so I'm taking out the free wound token. Yeah. And I'm putting that on here, and then there's the fourth one from that attack. Puts him on four damage now out of his nine, so he's already pretty badly wounded. Okay, so this so... was clearly a big play, and obviously a very big mistake. <laughs> um, well, but he's, he's charging into the fray here. So. Absolutely. And, and maybe, you know, I have some kind of special ability... Exactly. You probably oh, have something oh that would be really nice. Um, I have a card that I would love to play now. Do it. Go for it. It means I'm not going to get to attack. So I'm going to spend two fake crystals here, which go to here, to to use second wind, and I'll put the card mm. out here. Um, recover five. So I literally heal five oh. health. <laughs> nice. Uh, but it is an active action because the arrow is filled in. You may remove a bane from yourself. So if I had a, a negative bane token I've been given, I could remove that. Uh, I can't do that. So he's done his two actions. He's moved out and recovered the health. And then at the end of the activation, these fake crystals go to you, sir. And they are yours to use until you give them back to me or until the end of a round where we redress the balance of fate. Yes. Okay. All right. And now okay. he gets an activation token because he is absolutely finished. Mm. Back over to you. Okay. So I have... Well, I have Lilith here. Um, mm. And... You know, she's just next to him. Oh. It seems like the only oh. sensible thing, thing, thing to do now is to is for her to um, is for her to attack. Oh, um, I, I, I thought you were going to say dominate. Uh, well, I'm just <laughs> I'm just looking at her. Um, so, what would that do? Oh, um, well, um, so you would pay free fake crystals. Oh, of Which lower just... rank. So he's he's a hero. She, he, she's a leader. He is a. Um, he's also he's also a leader. So she wouldn't be able to target him. Um, she would be able to target either of these rose knights, however. Um, and have them take a single action, so they could walk over to her. They could attack someone, and then they'd get a day's token afterwards as well. Um, ha. Huh. Well, we should just, because I'm kind of thinking, is there any way these Rose Knights would be able to attack? No. Um, well, they could attack each other. You know, I could get one of them to mm. attack. Um, can, how, what is, um, what is her, what's her range on the, on the Dominate? Uh, it, within, it within appears four? to be four squares. So one, two, three, four. Okay. So do you know what? Let's just we'll just do this. To, yeah. <laughs> to kind of just you know what to get her. That's a mean mm. mean ability. So uh, she's that, gonna that's target your area for ones I'm giving you. Oh, these come over to right. me if I give too much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this rose knight mm -hmm. right there. He will attack. Oh, attacking her commanding um, officer. Uh, yes. Her betrayal. Um, 
Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm, I feel terrible doing this, but oh, it's fine, that's, really. That's a that's a that's a wicked move. Um, so she has an attack of three and an accuracy of one. So after you've rolled the three dice, you're adding one on top. Okay. So let me just get my. So you you'll want a third one over there. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Oh, wow, that would be a dangerous roll. Oh, that that didn't that, count. I just kind of flipped. No, no, no. I yeah. just kind of, you know. Here we go. Oh, a, a three and a two is five, plus the accuracy of one is six. Yes. Uh, Elia has a dodge of four. She gets and no damage. armor, That's so that is one point of damage to her. And now I need to get a daze token. Which okay. will be this one and give it to this Rose Knight because now she's kind of confused and stunned and wondering what's going on as she's blinking and coming back to her senses. And what would so Lilith like to do is, for her second action? Well, she's now going to attack. Does she have something? I don't know what she has in what she's got. Um, her, uh, she has a speeding. permanent ability where everyone attacking her gets disadvantage and can't spend any focus tokens um well, and she could channel to get a fake crystal she can use to pay ability costs so she could dominate cheaper next turn but she takes a point of yeah. damage if she wants to channel uh okay i think she'll just do her she will just do her attack here okay so that'll be five dice now she does have reach so she could attack someone further away and she has pierce one which will ignore one point of Godfrey's armor when she attacks him because the snake has big sharp fangs that bites in. Ah, so, but we, these are all mine, so. So you're wanting five dice. Yes, five. Got it. Yes. There so you let go. me just grab those and we'll just give him a good shake here. Yeah, yeah give, him a, give him a right good shake. Whoa. Sorry. Okay, so we have a one, two, four, eight and a blank and she has um uh she doesn't have accuracy she just has pierce so that's eight and with his he has an armor his dodge of three and an armor of two but her pierce reduces his armor of two down to a one so that goes down to a four so we divide the eight by four, and he is taking two points of damage. But he's fully healed now, so we're just well. He was. Again. Now he isn't. Yeah. <laughs> and so, she has he... done two actions, so she gets an activation token now. Got it. Yeah. Um. Well, that was exciting. That was a. That was a. That was a bitter action there, so wow. Mm. I'm going to activate my little Rose Knights here. And, oh, wait, is that wise? Should I activate Elia first? Because she has things that give them bonuses. Um, okay. Command. What does Command do? Because she can use... Uh, Oh, uh, you add into your activation, so these come to me, and I have many, right. many fake crystals. You have um, a lot of things to do here. So command is, I think it means I just get to make them do stuff outside of their activation and make them take an action. But I want to check because it's, um, where are we here? Uh, leader, no, it's not leader, it's, um. Huh, I can't find it, so it's fine. I, I can't find it, so I won't do it. Keep it simple, yeah? yeah so definitely. she's going to move to here, and she will attack this Ocelite guard. Oh, no. Now, when she is... She has an ability called Duelist. So when she's threatened by only a single enemy, she gets accuracy four and evasive four. I think evasive gives her extra dodge, but most importantly here is the accuracy, obviously. So I'm going to roll my four dice here. 
It's going to give them a bit of a shake and send them clattering across the board. Always a five, so I'll, I'll roll that again. Uh, Ooh. So that's Ooh. five, eight, ten, fourteen. Plus accuracy four is eighteen. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh dear. So I our poor Scourge is divided that... by 18 by 3, and he takes 6 damage. He only has 3. He is decimated. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so we'll take him off the table. I, I believe somewhere in your deck you might have a uh, a card that lets you bring on reinforcements, so you could bring back another skeleton or something. Uh, so that would now mean that I have scored um, 4 victory points because I've killed 2 Ocelite Guard. And okay. you have scored three victory points because you've taken out the one Tiger Knight Archer. Right. Uh, but she has now finished her activation and she is done. And play passes back over to you. But that was quite a move, wasn't it? Um, it that was, was quite a... valiant. <laughs> that, I'll, I'll say that. Um, okay, let's have a look here. Um, huh. So... I have not moved the geists, the geists, uh, I've moved the guards. Yeah, a geist, um, it's, it's like Scottish geist. for ghost. Yes. It, it's, a, it's an old archaic word. Very so lovely he's and gonna, though. He's going to spend his first move, his first activation here, and then hmm. he's going to attack. And he's got two. What is oh, he? Oh, I found command. What does he do? Um, so he's got two attack, disorienting blast. Uh, instead of damage, they do daze. Daze is powerful. Oh, okay. okay. Because it, it gives them disadvantage when they're attacking and gives you advantage when you're attacking them. Yes, but I'm thinking because Godfrey is done moving, mm. he won't. It, it won't benefit. It, it in won't any way. hamper him as much unless you want to attack him a lot with with many of your minions. I. I mean, that's that is the plan this round. The plan is to this one. Ah, um, and so the day's token goes away yes. as soon as it has been used. So. It, it would give him disadvantage when attacking, but as soon as he attacks, it then goes away after the attack. And if you, yeah. if you if you daze him, what you could do is have one of the geists uh, use the ranged daze attack on him to yeah. to give you advantage when attacking him, and then the other one could come in and attack him. Or you could and, have and Mukram all... attack him. I was gonna it. yeah. In, yeah. So I, instead of because I kind of, I kind of want to see how the big bad, <laughs> the big bad ones do in oh, action. Oh yes, it should be in, fun. <laughs> instead of the, I'm going to move the guy. I forget where he was. I will just. Put oh, him... he was, he was somewhere around there. I think it was. We're, we're uh, not trying to be too he, precise today. He can, he can kind of attack straight away, can't he? Absolutely, yes. And I want to, I just want to have a look at quickly and see what kind oh, of. Oh yes monstrosities he can so he has grim uh, harvest which he can use against someone who's blooded um we okay, don't have enough well, damage on on godfrey yet at the moment lord of the deathless command an undead ignoring rank that's quite powerful uh ossification wow. after he fells an enemy place an ocelite guard into the space for fallen character occupied so he literally you know beats them down and reanimates the body as another ocelite guard Oh my goodness! Okay, so um, wow, um, that is. <laughs> so you could just attack I, twice. I can see how this game exactly. I can see how this game actually creates quite a few very easily. Oh, excuse me, what am I doing here? If um, if you attack the uh, first time and deal enough damage to make him bloodied, you could even use the the bloody harvest on him, whatever it's called. So five he's dice. got five. Ooh. Attacks. So I'm gonna shake these and just try and. Okay, that's not good. That, that, they they just got put down. There we go. That's a bit. Better. Oh god. Um, I will do. This is okay. I'm sorry. This is the excitement. 
Okay, one um, fell off the edge into the void, never to be seen again. We'll <laughs> we'll give you a new one over here, um, right. a replacement oh, die, God. which you can roll, yeah, and I'll, and you'll have an extra one to roll anyway. So okay, roll so these I'll just, two. So five, ten, two. and two more dice. All right, here we go. Okay. Uh, I, 10, I 13, 15. Okay. And you have Pierce 1 as well. So, um, Godfrey has a dodge of 3 and an armor of 2, which for Pierce 1 reduces down to an armor of 1. So we're dividing 15 by 4. So we get 4, 8, 12. That's 3 points of damage. So okay. I will give him then... a free wound total, taking him up to 4. So he's on five out of his nine health. He's not quite bloodied yet. But and we have you, you, yeah. I, you, I you have did another, roll the, the extra dice. Attack. Yes, so that's that's correct. I did. So second attack. Oh yes, this could absolutely destroy him. Um, let's see. Is that? Am I doing this correctly? Uh yeah. No. You can. You, now you've got more selected. You yeah. could just. I'm undo. just too much. Because I'm doing it on the mouse pad, it's a little bit more difficult to... That's okay. Um... So we have two fives, so you get to roll two extra dice. So 10, 13, 16, 17. This is going to be a lot. <laughs> this is going to be... We're going to do these two here. Here we go. Okay. 18, 19, 20, 25. This five can't create any more fives. No. Now, okay. you it. see how... Um, Mukram wow. has an ability called Wound on his on yes. his card in the bottom right hand corner. The yeah. sword going in, smashing through something there, that shows that's a critical effect, and you can spend a five to do that instead of getting an extra die to roll. Oh, uh, I so... think I think what Wound would do would just um, Wound represents a variety of different ah. situations. Ah, so Wound, he'd get a Wound token which is different to a damage token. And then at the start of his mm -hmm. turn, he would take one damage and roll a die. Uh, mm -hmm. If he rolls a three or four or a five, the wound token goes away. Otherwise, the wound token stays on him and he continues bleeding every turn. So the wound status is quite nasty. However, you've got 25 damage. Yeah, exactly. Ignoring I'm one thinking... point of my armor. So 25 divided by four is... Is it five or six? Six. It's six. Yeah. Six. Uh, six damage so... on top of the four he's already taken will absolutely finish him off. Oh my goodness! Wow. Okay. Um, now I could I could then spend that card, the never say die card, to keep him on the I table. Would, but I would probably. But he would no? perish at the end of the round, and he's already had his activation. So you've taken. Ah. Enough, enough three. Okay. Um, that gets you a whole nine points. So nine plus three for the Tiger Knight Archer now puts you on 12 points to the four I gained and, for defeating your two. Oh, wait. And no, how different. many victory points? So normally, if we were playing a scenario, we would say um, we, we've got 50 points worth of stuff on the table each. In a uh -huh. normal, straight-up fighting scenario, it would be the first person to 45 victory points wins. So, you know, 90% uh, of your right total it. force size. Okay. If we were playing a scenario where there were objectives on the table that we could interact with that would gain us additional victory points that way, there might be different victory conditions. Got it. So you're doing could quite it. well here. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm extremely lucky. I mean, and I do kind of, I do tend to enjoy now the bit of, the bit of luck is, because of... there is one more thing you get to do now before you finish oh, no, okay. Mugram's activation, because you have a reaction that's just triggered. Okay. Ossification. Oh, because I, so I killed one. Ah, but it costs one he fake crystal me. to activate. I, um, okay, so it's so, not an automatic thing. So it's not quite automatic, but you, you could have then popped another skeleton back on the board um, in any of the the nine spaces um, that he it. was occupying. Oh, no, he was got a two-by-two, two, wasn't he? So any of the four spaces he was in. All right. 
Uh, so that's him finished and puts us in a very bad situation here. Oh, I, I could have used Veronique's reaction to, to shield him and um, telekinetic shield to imp impose disadvantage on the attack and daze the attacker. Oh, well, I'll remember that next time. <laughs> sure. So, but, so that would necessitate that she had moved before him and then uh, No, no, no. It, it's a uh, full okay. square range. So Godfrey was in range. So I could have uh, used the telekinetic shield to protect him. Okay, but so in you know have it ha, you know had we been you know more into the game you know been a little she would more have, aware oh, yes yes yeah yeah okay but that's just something that's just something to remember she she could he could conceivably have survived and it, it's and, entirely um, possible but I'm going to go with yeah, Veronique yeah. now to be interesting okay, yes let's get uh, let's do, she's do going to move twice here um. One, two, three, four. Oh my goodness. Four. And then the second move is for that fifth movement point to get up into here. Whoa. She is a big... She's huge. She's bigger than... Uh, she's nine squares. She's the same size as Roth. It's just the, the way the picture is shown on the token for him. Looks okay, okay. Okay, got it. Oops. Um, was, uh, She will, uh, as her bonus ability, as, as, a, as, a, as a lord use hyperkinetic perforation <laughs> okay which is pretty it much does. exactly what it sounds like uh -huh. <laughs> um so this is an attack um it costs me three fake crystals which i will now give over to you mm, that doesn't bode well it's a nice um, one it's just act activating a superpower advantage on this attack and she ignores all tokens, keywords, and abilities on the enemy characters that she is attacking. And you mm. cannot play fate tokens during this attack to do any special abilities to protect yourself. Oh my, okay. So... Who's the, who the lucky recipient of, of that hyperkinetic? <laughs> I, I think it has to be Lilith or Mulcrum, really. Yes. And if if I Lilith, I think is a easier to take out. Um, but if I if I go for Mukrom, I can create space that you could bring Roth in and attack with. So no, I'll go for Lilith. Lilith. It's thematic. She's, Lilith. she's been very nice and dangerous. It's, it's easier to um, so a little bit easier. I'm rolling six dice to attack here. Whoa. And. I gain advantage on this attack. So what advantage does is it gives me an extra die. So I'm rolling seven dice now. But after mm. I've rolled these seven dice, I I seem to only have six. I will create a seventh one. So after I've rolled all of these, because I had one advantage die, I get to take away one of my lowest dice. So I'm increasing the average of the dice roll, but still getting the same amount of dice. So okay. I'm going to roll these now furiously Whoa. and see how many fives I can get. Oh! Uh, disadvantage means... My, my advantage means I had to take away the lowest one. If I had disadvantage, I would be adding dice again, but I'd, we'd be taking away the highest dice. So okay. that I would get a lower dice roll. So I have a lot mm. of nice rolls here. I have 5, mm -hmm. 10, 13, 17, 18, 19, 20. Whoa. Um, you could you get extra rolls with these I as could, well. I I have a five. And for the second one, I could apply days, or I could just roll again. I'm going to go with extra dice to try and get lots of more damage in here. Yes, hit me. Oh my. <laughs> so that puts us on twenty five, but this five doesn't give me anything else. Uh, is that correct? Five, ten, fifteen, uh, eighteen, nine, twenty, nine, yeah, twenty five. Um. So Lilith has a dodge of. Oh wait, am I adding anything? Um, no, no, no accuracy. I have Pierce two, which would ignore two points of armor, which Lilith doesn't have. So maybe I should have gone for Mukrom after all, if he has armor. Uh, he does have one point of armor. So we're dividing twenty-five by four. Um, so we're getting That's six again, be... aren't we? 
Yes. So, so she is now I will heavily wounded. find I will seek the free wound token. There it is. And mm. I will copy two onto Lilith. Oh. And we'll we'll pop those on here. She's now very badly hurt. Oh ah. god. Oh, and god. I'm 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 messing everything up here. So we just pop these on here. Um, so a little bit more of that and she'd be out of the action, but that wasn't quite enough. So that's Veronique's activation done, and she now gets an activated token to show you she's finished. And now that she's finished, these three fake crystals go back into your pool to spend. Okay. So. Okay. The problem with your great big flying demon is finding a space for him to land in. Ah, oh, so he has to land as well. Well, mm. if, he, if, if you want him to be next to some of my guys and attack. Yeah. So remember that he can use a skill as a bonus action. So if you can, with two move actions, get him to somewhere he could fight, like uh, somewhere over here then could you could use to... his uh oh no he doesn't oh that's really bad he he can't reach anyone yet oh mm. he can he can he absolutely he can, can reach that the, uh, the one, archer or two three because he has mm. the extra space of reach on his weapon ah. he could go fly and land um you know over here and still reach Veronique across Lilith and the and the Geist and the Oscillate Guard. So we're gonna do Roth now. I'll, I'll do Roth now. Yes. And, um, just to we gotta get the Let, let's see already, absolute carnage. You just showed how how crazy hmm. it. So let me just see. Was he here? Yeah, he was yeah, here. He was. So I would move him. Can he reach Veronica? Veronica, Veronique? He, you'd move one to here, and then yeah. two, three, four to here, or even just across Lilith directly to here, and land over right there. Here. Um, one further down. Oh, one. Of, one and then yeah, he can reach someone two squares away. So that's one square here, two squares here. Okay, he's gonna go for. He's gonna go for her. Oh yes. And uh, and I'm going to see if I can. Are there any of my kind of fate cards that can come into play? That is a very good thing to check. Because I have something that says Holy Smite, a Divine Smite. Oh, you, you probably shouldn't have that. That's something oh, the okay. demons can't use. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> too bad. Um, that would have been hmm. very useful if it wasn't him doing it. Yes. Um, mm -mm -mm. Smelt. Uh, um, why don't I give you one of my cards? Okay. And we say you had that in your hand and you can use that. All right. That's a lot because this will make for a much more exciting uh, thing. So that will cost you two fake crystals to, to use. We'll just have, a, oh, have a look at that. As you now see, fours and fives can be used to trigger critical effects like getting Whoa. extra dice when okay. you attack. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna move them up. Yes. So this side anywhere. of the line. There you go. Yeah. So so now you're only rolling four dice. If he was bloodied, so if he was at half health, he would gain advantage on this. Um. You don't have. Wait 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 wait. This this oscillate guard here is near enough to being directly opposite that we'll say you get advantage for that as well. So that'll take you to five dice. So he, the Roth, he, let me just get him here. Um, but remember that it's one of these is an advantage die. So you'll be taking one of them away after you've rolled them all. Yes. Let me have a look here. Roth. Here we go. I'm just having a look at him here. So he is not that crazy powerful sort of N not until he gets sort of straight, badly at, straight hurt. attack okay. but when he's bloodied he gets plus one attack but he also all gives right. that ability to all of your guys so 
Lilith now has plus one attack while she's next to him because she's bloodied. Uh, you should be rolling a fifth die because of the advantage I gave you for the Oscillate Guard. Okay, so, so that so the... four will... you can use that for an extra yes. one. Or so you can apply count... the wound condition if you want to, to mess her up so that she might keep and taking bleeding damage. Does yeah, so yeah, why don't we just why don't we so sh I would do two, four, six, is that enough to damage her uh, at all? Two, four you take away the zero. So you have two, four, yeah. eight, ten. Yeah. And she would have a dodge of four and an armor of three. So that would be seven. But you do have Pierce mm -hmm. 1, so we ignore one point of armor and go down to 6. So that 10 divided by 6 would be no damage unless you could find a way to do some extra damage. So, so you can, have, you can I... with that 4 can give you another die to roll. Yeah, or you or could just wound. give her a wound token and say, there you go, you could start taking damage every turn until you can roll to get rid of it. Okay, because we're doing, um, you know, we're doing this now, and in a little bit I need to begin to prepare for today's soccer game versus England. Oh, um, yes, absolutely. I, I am going to try and just, you know, damage her a little bit more. Wonderful. Um, I'm just going to just gonna try and see if I can get any so, kind of nothing. Oh, oh too so bad. she oh. absolutely <laughs> takes it. And, oh, wow. And he Incredible. gets furious and frustrated. So obviously now... I've got my Rose Knights left, you've got your Geist left, but we, we can wrap it up here if you like and and pretend we finished would, the round. Well, I think I think we've kind of gotten a very at least I have gotten a very good idea of how the game works and how, how the game plays. I, and, I'm glad. Um, I and I'm, I really appreciate it. I think it very easily creates a lot of these kind of epic moments that we, we want to have in a board game. Oh yes, um, um, you know, sort of, and 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 um, not even they're not even planned. They just sort of happen, you know. They just mm. kind of occur, you know. Just um, a dive roll, or suddenly avoiding, um, you know, a straight straight on full on slot of a <laughs> boss attack. So that kind of, I mean, that is amazing. And um, there, there's also. Uh, lots of lovely little things we're missing out on so like my, my favorite character is one of the neutral characters he's a dwarf and he mm. he 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 will go around the battlefield challenging people and going come on fight me i'll fight a lot of you and his special mm. ability is that he the more people he's fighting the more powerful he becomes oh excellent <laughs> so uh, there's, is... there's lots of fun tricks and abilities we we can play when we're more familiar with things yeah I really appreciate you taking the time to show off the game. I think. Oh, it's I think my pleasure. It, I mean, it, it's. Uh, I'm excited for the Kickstarter. When is that? Do you remember the one that um, is that it's, launching? It's theoretically on the eighth, I think, but it could it could get delayed till next week, possibly. All right. So, so... literally, like tomorrow, I think, at this point. Wow. That's definitely something to look out for, um, and um, I will be—I'll be backing that. Oh, I certainly will as well. And, um, yes. <laughs> and uh, this is um, so, Raphael. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks so much for uh, setting it up, taking the time, and that, that's teaching right. me. Thank you very much for playing. I will see you talk to you in the discord and uh until then take care and uh, yeah <laughs> have a great have a great afternoon i'll do my best hope you enjoy the football All game right. and we'll talk again soon absolutely thanks so much